What's up, Frank fan? I have a special guest today with me, my son, Dan Ford, to share with you his top 10 fragrances or the top 10 fragrances someone should consider when starting a collection or starting to wear fragrances. Stay tuned. It's coming up right now. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna share with you his top 10 fragrances, but you know, the 10 fragrances that we felt, you know, that are the best choices for someone starting out. Believe it or not, fragrances are a great thing because when you wanna make a first impression, subconsciously, your scent, your smell is actually your essence. It's something that people do notice right away. I like to call it the ultimate final accessory, so you really do not wanna screw up with this. So the four aspects of choosing fragrances that he takes into consideration when putting together his favorite top 10 fragrances to start your collection with are price, performance, versatility and personal taste because personal taste is something very important we all have our own some people might like woody spicier fragrances or other people might like aromatic citrus fragrances aquatic so that's one thing to really keep in mind so without any further ado i'm going to jump out of your way and dan's going to take over and tell you his top 10 favorite fragrances that you should consider when starting out your collection so i just want to preface this collection by saying it is my personal taste i'm not going to be putting anything into consideration some of these fragrances are going to be a little bit in the higher price range for a kid my age who's going to be working their own job and making their own money to afford this collection so you're gonna want to have to prioritize this sort of to be uh, stylish and smell good if you want these fragrances they're more towards the high end and there's some smaller low budget fragrances in the collection so let's just hop right into it so the first fragrance I have for you guys is Loam it's a fantastic versatile fragrance it's very well known in the community I'm sure everyone knows about it but the reason why I personally like it is the versatility. You can use it in the fall, you can use it in the winter, and it's a very nice summer fragrance as well. But, I mean, this is an older formulation, and the newer ones are a bit on the weaker side, but this formulation is fantastic and will last you a very long time, great longevity, about six to eight hours on the original bottle, and the older, the newer bottle has about two to four, it's kind of weak, but I, I continue to respray throughout the day. The most prominent note is the apple note on top, and there's a fruity and a woody base on the bottom, so you get a lot of versatility in the fragrance. It's definitely one of the most versatile fragrances I own, and it's definitely one worth checking out if you're starting up a fragrance to have in your collection as a bomb, versatile fragrance. The next fragrance I have for you is one of my dad's personal favorite fragrances, is Paco Rabanne's One Million. Now this note, uh, this fragrance first to me came on as sort of a gourmandy fragrance, it's sweet, but it's not. It's, it's a woody, spicy oriental fragrance. So the bottle here is very gaudy, a lot like a gold bar, um, which is great because I'm a huge fan of the new Red Dead Redemption 2. And it has um, blood orange on top, beautiful rose in there, along with some cinnamon. It's great for any nice, sleek, elegant night on the town. And my girlfriend absolutely loves this fragrance. She had me spray a shirt before she went to college to keep it so she could smell it, so she could remember me. Beautiful fragrance and definitely a great addition to your collection if you're gonna be spending some nights out on the town. This next fragrance is one of my all-time favorites. I remember the first time I ever smelled the original formulation, I was at my friend's house about two years ago and I had sprayed a bottle of his dad's on me and I was like, whoa, this is great. Dad, can you get me a bottle of this? So this next one is a, a new version of it. It's the Absolute uh, Aqua Di Gio formulation. It's a bit different than the original. For me, it's like the Paco Rabanne Invictus meets the original Aqua Di Gio in a perfect blend formulation. It's fantastic. It's sweet, it's mass appealing, and most importantly, it's very elegant. This is another versatile fragrance that I love to wear all year round and is a go-to for me. This is another great sweet fragrance same in the similar vein as Paco Rabanne's One Million. Um, it's a great fragrance, but it was discontinued a while back and it's reformulated now. A bit weaker than the original, as we know, fragrance, uh, fragrances tend to be a bit weaker when they're reformulated. It has some sweet notes like pear, but also a nice oriental spicy vibe in the sense. And it's a fantastic fragrance for a night out on the town as well. For some reason, when I first started looking into fragrance, I uh, had a fragrance called Animal Animal, which I'm sure many of you are f familiar with. It was a strong, pungent gourmand, and I got sick of the strong gourmand, so I started to veer towards, when I went towards sweeter fragrances, more elegant, formal fragrances like this one and One Million. This next fragrance might come to you guys as a bit of a shock. Literally. This fragrance is CK1 Shock. It's a low budget fragrance for people who don't want to break the bank. Um, it's great if you're a huge fan of Paul Green and you want a more modern alternative to the fragrance. Fantastic, and, but it's also a bit of an acquired taste compared to the other fragrances I've represented because it has that gourmand tobacco vibe to it. 
and it's gonna be a little bit pungent if you're gonna be in a small space. It's not for everyone, but it's definitely worth checking out for the price point. Very cheap, and you can get a great price in the gray market. Speaking of sexy, elegant fragrances I cannot live without, Here's another one from the House of Chanel. It's Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme. Fantastic fragrance, one of my favorites. It's my favorite from the Allure collection, the uh, Homme Sport collection. It has some tonka bean in there, some mint, beautiful notes all formulated to make a beautiful accord. Fantastic fragrance if you're looking for versatility, especially in the autumn. This is my favorite summer scent for many reasons. This is Fahrenheit Aqua from the House of Dior. It has the beautiful sweet pink grapefruit, cool mint, and some vetiver in there, which gives it a lot of depth. And it's not just a simple sweet fragrance to wear in the summer, an aqua fragrance to wear in the summer. It sticks on your skin very well if you're gonna be outside doing things and enjoying yourself. And the reason why I like it in particular is because of the versatility of the notes. It has the sweetness, it has the woody base with the vetiver, the reason why I like it is not only because it's a great scent, but I know I'm going to be getting longevity with the performance and it's not going to just sweat off like other fragrances. The next fragrance is the most commonly purchased fragrance by men in the last few years. This is Dior Sauvage, another fragrance from the House of Dior. Fantastic, all-around versatile fragrance. It has the beautiful, cool vibe that many fragrances are trying to emulate after its success. Say what you will about Dior Sauvage with its mainstream success and its overuse, but it really gets the job done and it has great performance. This is another great versatile fragrance that I know I can put on blindly and I'm gonna get great performance and a fantastic scent that's gonna carry me throughout the day. Many say that it has a similar vibe as Paco Rabanne's Invictus, but it has a nice spicy oriental vibe in the bottom. It adds some oriental components that really takes it to the next level in my opinion. This next one kind of falls out of the trend with more affordable fragrances, but it's my one of my all-time favorites for many reasons. One of the main reasons is because it was my all-time favorite artist, Michael Jackson's favorite fragrance. An absolute legend just like this fragrance from the house of Tom Ford. This obviously has a black orchid vibe, but I really love the earthy uh, essence that you get from the black truffle. Actually, Michael Jackson was an earth sign himself as a Virgo, and it's also a beautiful oriental vibe on the lower notes. Great fragrance. Not cheap, though. So you're going to be spend spending a lot of money to get that Michael Jackson essence, but it's definitely worth it to be smelling like a legend. I hope you guys really like my picks. This is my top 10 personal favorite fragrances. Please, if you haven't shown your support for my father's channel, subscribe, like the video, and share this video with your friends. And also, please let me know in the comment section below what your top favorite fragrances are, and maybe I'll check them out. Thank you so much. Fragcom. See you later.